when should you check your front brake pads? Let's talk about it inside. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave loads of comments below. Check out the website, revelateralpha.com and the link's in the description below. So in this video, I'm talking about the front brake caliper right down there. There it is and uh, on the Harley Davidson Sport Glide, but you could apply the same principle to uh, all the soft tail range as well. So what we're gonna do is just inspect the thickness uh, of the pads and also by extension, whether you would need to change them and how you would do that as well. Now the actual minimum thickness of the brake pads uh, should be of the friction material, the actual uh, pad itself, uh, is equal or less to the dimension of a 1.02 millimeters, which is uh, 0.04 inches. In other words, very, very thin, right? And what is one millimeter? Well, uh, it's about that big <laughs> not much at all uh, right so first of all you're going to need uh, an allen key and this is uh, set number five uh, to uh, take off your hanger pins here now all you're doing here let me just bring this in closer okay so what we would normally do is take off the mounting bolts of the brake caliper here take the whole thing off and then uh, undo everything but actually you don't want to do that uh, I'm going to show, show you a quick way to do it. Just leave those intact and you're just going to take these hanger pin uh, bolts out. And basically these hanger pins go through there and they actually keep the pads in place. Okay, so the pads are right there behind this spring here. Right, so let's just do that. And they're actually, you know, quite simple to take off. There we go. And these are torqued down as well. out there we go there's one and there's two and then that comes off there like that like that one like that and one like that you can see on here there is uh, an arrow pointing up and that's the up mark right there like that so that's how it goes okay now we're looking at the pads themselves so you can see there right there if I just do that, right there, there is quite a, a reasonable amount of thickness there. I would say that's about nearly three mil, two and a half mil of thickness on either side. So actually, that doesn't need changing. That's absolutely fine. But I'm just gonna discuss with you the actual process of removing the pads and then replacing the pads. It's a very simple process. Okay, so to remove the pads, literally, you just take these hanger pins out like that, and you just remove the pad. You actually pull it out. So if I just do this, from this side, there we go, pull out the pad. And you can actually see there's still quite a lot of wear left in that. So that's absolutely fine. It's not scored, the disc isn't damaged as well. Absolutely fine. Once you've replaced the pad, then you could actually get another pad and put it back in. The problem with the new pad is that it's gonna to be too thick. So once you've taken out both pads on either side, there we go, just leave it open like that. Now you've got this wear groove as well, which is absolutely fine. It's still, it's still saying it's absolutely fine. Once you've gone past that wear groove, that will actually tell you that it's worn all the way through. So that's another indicator. But a new pad would be a lot thicker. So what you're gonna to need to do is push these pistons all the way back in. Now, if you try and push the piston uh, by itself without releasing the pressure of the master cylinder here, then you're gonna have a bit of difficulty. So what you need to do is just release these bolts here, these screws on the master cylinder right there. Don't take the cap off, just release it so it's got a little bit of pressure and break the seal. That's all you need to do. Now, the next thing you need to do is actually get these pistons pushed all the way back in. Now, the service manual would have us take off the whole caliper, get a G-clamp, uh, use the original pad and actually push it back in. That's the proper way to do it, but it is a little bit time consuming. And if you haven't got the wherewithal, you might run into a bit of difficulty. 
So what you can do is you've got to be very careful with this, by the way. So you've, you know, you have to be very delicate. You can actually put a flathead screwdriver and here I have two, but essentially you just get one and all you need to do is actually pop it in between the piston, the actual piston and your brake disc and you need just to lever it back into position. Now, what you mustn't do is actually put pressure against the disc to push the piston back in. What you effectively need to do, what you effectively need to do is push the screwdriver past the two pistons and push against the pistons like that. So you're pushing, do not lever against the, the disc to push them in. So you, so you push it in like that and then you push that way. And the same on this side, you push and push it, the pistons back in. So push, push. Do not do that. Do not do that, put pressure on the disc because what that will do, that will warp the disc and also cause damage as well. Okay, the next thing to do is then get your new discs and pop them back in. So, we just simulate these are the new discs and you pop them just literally back in. Just make sure they're level. Now, what you have to do, you have to align the holes up there through there as well, because that's where the hanger pin is gonna go through. Same on this side and the spring goes back on place like that. And basically you're popping the hanger pin, hanger pin go through there, through there, through there. There we go. And then all we're doing is actually putting the pins through the pad holes, but also uh, in between the springs. So the spring holds them in place and then we're just doing them back up. Just do them hand tight for now. Now at this point, I'm not gonna tighten anything up. Basically, we're just gonna pause a little bit and make sure that everything is in, in proper place. We haven't undone the mounting bolts on the caliper, so that's nothing to worry about. We've made sure that our hands are clean, mine aren't, but obviously with new pads, you make sure they're clean, not covered in oil or anything, not contaminated, and they're, they're a proper fit. Also made sure that the hanger pins have gone through the actual holes of the pads and also beneath the spring as well. So the spring is being held by those hanger pins. We make sure that the spring is the right way up, which is the most important thing. Then we just hand tighten them on. That's all we've done. Now, I must stress at this time again that the proper procedure is to take off the caliper, but in my opinion, you don't need to take off the caliper just to replace your brake pads. All you need to do is just lever them out, just be very gentle with them, push the pistons back in, make sure you don't put pressure on the, on the um, brake disc, you're pushing the pistons back in as opposed to levering them. Don't lever them, push them. Make sure you're very careful with the flathead screwdriver and not to damage or score the pistons at all as well. Once you've done that, because as you push the piston back in, the brake fluid is going to go back up and it's got time to actually go back up to the master cylinder as well. That's why you've released the pressure on, off the cap. Then just making sure nothing is overflowing, just tighten those back up. Okay, so for the, uh, the front master cylinder here, the actual torque setting is 1 to 1.2 uh, newton meters or 9 to 11 inch pounds. It's basically hardly anything at all, okay? Just do it, uh, just tighten it up. You could even just do it by, by hand, if you like, without a torque wrench. But it's 1 to 1.2. Just tighten up and that, that'll be fine. Okay, so the hanger pins here, they're actually at 14.7 to 19.6 newton meters or 11 to 14 foot pounds, foot pounds this is. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna retighten those up now. Get my trusty torque wrench out and it's 14.7 to 19.6. So we're just gonna go up to something like 17 there. Just check those again. Yeah, 14.7 to 9.6. So get that on there. That's it, done. Right, the next thing to do then is actually 
get the pads closer to the disc. The only way you can do that is actually to gradually pump the front brake. Don't worry if there isn't any pressure there, it's almost really loose. All that is, it's just it needs to push the pistons out and get the pad close so there isn't any resistance there. That's why you're feeling that. So you pump it a little bit and that will push out the pistons. It will drive the brake fluid down. It will push out the pistons until the pads are snug against the disc. Once you feel that, that it's tight, then it's okay. Now, the next thing you need to do is then go and give it a test ride. You need to apply the brakes quite gradually uh, and for the first 100 miles or so, let them bed in, let them score in and get, and get that rough edge on them so they're breaking, uh, working effectively. So that's it really, you've inspected the brake pads. They've got the telltale groove on there, which is just over a mil uh, thickness uh, when it's completely uh, gone. So if you don't see the groove, then you need time to change your pads really. But I've got plenty of pad wear left on those. And basically just uh, take those hanger pins out. You don't need to remove the caliper. Take those uh, pad pins out, uh, hanger pins out, and then just take the pads out push the pistons back in and then put new pads in with clean hands put the put the hanger pins back in with the spring and then tighten up the the reservoir cap as well pump the brakes until the fluid pushes those pistons back and or back into position and pushes the pad closer to the pad take it for a test ride and bed them in over 100 miles or so now one word of uh, advice here, I suppose. How can you uh, prolong the length of your brake pads? Well, actually it comes down to riding technique, riding style, rather than actual, which is the best pad uh, to use or not. Now, there obviously there are different types of pads. I won't go into that, that'll be for another video. But if you've got a standard brake pad, what you need to do is actually go easy on the brakes. Don't try not to apply the brakes too often, but you compensate for that for reduced uh, riding speed. But also, most uh, importantly, you actually increase the distance between yourself and any vehicles in front of you so that you can reduce your speed, not by braking, but by just by changing gears or reduce it, rolling off the throttle. That way you're minimizing the amount of braking requirement required. Therefore, using the brakes less, you're just decelerating normally or just changing down through the gears and then therefore you'll be prolonging the life of those pads. Okay, so it's about riding style, riding uh, awareness as well. So if you're riding along and you've got lots of time uh, to react to any hazards, any potential pitfalls, anything else that's going on the road, then you don't really need to use the brakes so much. You can re just reduce your speed, roll off the throttle, change down through the gears. There'll be less requirement for you to use the brakes, uh, whether gradually or in an emergency, therefore less wear on the pads as well. But obviously if you need to use them, you use them, it's as simple as that. But that's how you prolong the life of the pads. That's how you inspect them, minimum thickness. That's how you change them. Very simple uh, job to do. We'll talk about the uh, rear uh, brake pads on another video. But uh, any uh, thoughts or any tips, let's leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. As I say, be very careful with uh, pushing the pistons back in not to damage anything. And don't put any pressure on the brake disc, okay? So that, that's the word of warning there. You don't want to do that. But say, let me know what uh, you think in the comments below. Please uh, check out the website revelatoralf.com and all the uh, links uh, below in the description. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next video. Ta-da. Revelator Al.